Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. Layla here, and today I am reviewing the Motika markers. They sent me this little package that I'm gonna open. Okay, well, let's see if I can actually open it. Looks like scissors are gonna have to get involved in this. Okay, all right, I got scissors. There we go. I cut through some paper. All right, they come in this plastic thing. Interesting, and it comes also in this little sack bag, I guess you could say. Kind of cute. It's got this little Motika logo on it. And then here are my markers. And from what I understand, they are a company based in Brooklyn, New York, which I thought was pretty cool. My mom grew up in Brooklyn, New York, or maybe it was the Bronx. I'm not sure. Anyways, <laughs> it's one of those boroughs. So these are brush markers, which I thought was really cool. We've got our standard chisel nib on one side, and then we've got the brush nib. Oh, that's really nice, actually. Huh. At the time that they sent me these markers, they only had the gray set. So this is basically nine marker, nine markers? No, 10 markers of the gray scale going from the lightest gray to the darkest gray. And they're all cool grays. Yes, they're all cool grays. And I both like and dislike the color. I like it because it's different. It's, you don't usually see markers in this kind of color. They're usually like gray or sometimes black, mostly white. So definitely this green is extremely different. It definitely sets them apart. At the same time, I look at them and think the military, um, cause it is very much a military green. Kind of looks like mini grenade launchers. Like, anyways, all right. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and start color swatching. I've got a scrap piece of paper here, and I'm gonna start with my lightest, which is CG 0.5, and then I'll work all the way up to my darkest. The brush nib is very nice and spongy at the tip, but not too stiff, which is good. You want a good combination when it comes to brush nibs. For instance, I tried a marker once, that had a brush nib and the brush nib was super, super stiff. And I believe the stiffness contributed to how fast the nib ended up fraying, which was on the first use. I do like the square barrel. I thought that would be a bit of an issue, but it actually feels quite comfortable as I work with them. All right, so I just went ahead and I listed them with their numbers, because they're all cool grays. So I saved myself some time by just putting the numbers instead of CG 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then I'm just gonna do some blending going from my lightest gray to maybe my darkest, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'll be able to fit all 10 colors, but I'll definitely see how dark I can end up going. <laughs> I do expect it to blend quite well, especially since it's brush markers. Having a brush nib tends to help when blending colors. I do kind of get confused which slide is which. There's no indication other than the symbols that they have here. So the flat, the triangle going this way is the brush nib and the triangle going this way is the chisel nib. <laughs> Definitely like the minimalistic approach. It certainly helps that they're all one color, but I think the blend is quite good. So now to figure out what I'm going to draw. So I've got my render sketchbook. I use it a lot when it comes to coming up with ideas, poses, and just sketching in general. I also like it because it does well with alcohol markers as it doesn't bleed through. So now I'm starting a new page and I'm just using a regular mechanical pencil and I'm gonna sketch up some ideas. And so I know for a fact that I want to do a portrait of some sort, like something stylized, sort of out of like a magazine. So I'm working with grayscale. So I wanna try to aim for something serious. But yeah, sometimes I just feel like when I see photos in grayscale, it just feels like the subject matter is much more of a serious tone. I mean, that might be a cliche sort of thought process, but I don't know. I always think of Audrey Hepburn. 
And now, of course, since I said Audrey Hepburn, all I can think about is, why don't I paint her? Kind of trying to resist the urge, because I just don't feel I could do her justice. Okay, yeah, I think I'm going to try something inspired more from Audrey Hepburn. So I definitely like this, what I've got going on here, but I'm going to try something different. So basically now I'm just looking at a reference picture of Audrey Hepburn. I don't intend for this to look exactly like her because I'm definitely not one of those artists that can draw people exactly like they look. Like, you know when you just see a painting by an artist and they drew like, I don't know, like Brad Pitt or something. And for a minute, you're just like, that's a photo. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm definitely not that skilled at portraits. And I've always been envious of Audrey Hepburn's eyebrows. Okay. So it's definitely not one of her more iconic looks, I feel. I think when we always think of Audrey Hepburn, we think of Breakfast at Tiffany's or something. But I wanted to go with a more like, I don't know, serious look. So I think I want to go with this. And then basically the real challenge is seeing if I can translate this sketch onto the final piece <laughs> and hope that it looks just as good. Okay, so as usual, I have this Express It blending card paper in size eight and a half by 11. I'm gonna turn it this way. And I'm gonna start with my sketch, erase it a little bit. And I haven't decided if I'm going to use the markers right away or if I'm going to ink it but I will figure that out as soon as I finish the sketch. All right, so far so good. I'm actually pretty satisfied. Certainly made it a little bit bigger than I originally planned, but that seems to be the current trend in my life anyways, so I'm just accepting it. She kind of looks like Lana Del Rey. I mean, not completely, but I'm getting some Lana Del Rey vibes. All right, now I'm gonna take my little eraser, roll it up and pretty much dab off any excess graphite so that doesn't smear as I'm using the markers because I think I'm going to go just straight into marker coloring. All right, I'm a little nervous because as you know, I'm not too crazy about working like this, but I'm really hoping for the end effect to be super nice. The brushes on these markers though are really nice. Like my only frustration is just making sure this comes out well. But so far, I have no frustrations over these markers. They're definitely performing very well. The only thing that kind of annoys me is there's quite some uh, squeak, like so. Not the worst thing in the world, but it's there. And I felt like I should mention it just for those who do have issues with squeaky kinds of sounds. Is it weird that doing these eyebrows is actually my favorite part so far? <laughs> Probably. I'm gonna turn my canvas around just to sort of get nice thin stroke lines for her hair around here. Definitely really liking it. And I'm basically from here on out just gonna give it my own sort of styled spin just because I can. And just because like it, it, it has Audrey Hepburn inspiration behind it, but I don't feel it looks exactly like her. So, but I gotta say, I do like how this is turning out. Oh, definitely be careful with how you put the cap back on. Cause like they're rectangular in a sense, not exactly square. So I keep putting the cap back on. And if I put it on the wrong direction, it doesn't actually close. Cause that's not how it fits. I've had it happen to me like 10 times already. I definitely didn't expect to be this in love with this piece especially when I was getting real nervous in the beginning, but I'm pretty satisfied with how it's coming out. I hardly ever work in grayscale, simply because I just love color so much. And that's not to say Motika doesn't have colors, they actually do. They just released a 10 piece, I believe, autumn color, autumn color set. I'm not sure what that means, autumn colors. But anyways, just to say that they do have colors, However, when they sent me this set, by the way, they did send it for free um, in exchange for an honest review. And um, when they sent this set, it was the only set that they had. Given that they seem to be a company that's just kind of starting out. And I'm actually really glad I was 
able to use just grayscale because I honestly would not have thought of making this kind of a piece if I hadn't. If they had sent me colors, I would have been like, all right, we're gonna do our usual uh, piece and either I would have drawn it digitally or sketched it and it would have been something more along the lines of what I enjoy doing, the which is the anime style kind of stuff. And that's not to say I don't enjoy this, I really do, but I do like to do more fun sort of cartoon styles, just a bit more. <laughs> But it's nice to do this as a break, like to just kind of show myself, you know, hey, look at what you can accomplish. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that sort of thinking plays into the idea that any other type of art isn't real art. And I don't believe in that. And so basically this is my own take on Audrey Hepburn's sweater. It's technically all black, but I want to go for that ribbed sort of sweater effect. I definitely enjoy how easy it is with their nibs to achieve the different sizes of line widths that I want. Usually I have trouble with that with other brands. It's probably just a me thing though. No! <laughs> so while I was drawing like the shading lines, I got a little out of control with my stroke and ended up going outside of the piece. Great. Truly amazing of me. Ah! Jeez. I've heard that you could simply use a blender marker to erase mistakes, but I'm not so sure. Plus I don't really have a blender marker on me at the moment, which I know sounds crazy, but I mean, I probably do if I looked hard enough, but I kind of use just the Posca acrylic paint over it. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna stick with that. And of course, no piece is complete without shinies. And that's that. These markers were really fun to work with. They're like $29.50. I kind of felt like that was a little on the pricier side when I saw them, but I'm glad I've used them because the brush nib is really great quality. I think the inks are very good and I'm really happy with the piece that I ended up with and I'm glad that I went with a more uh, realism kind of piece. I feel like it really brings out the idea of seriousness. <laughs> and I didn't even use my micron pen to ink. I just pretty much went with the markers and that was that. So if you enjoyed this video, maybe comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys. Bye.